Never thought I'd actually really ever get to see one of these because um, you see them in the US and you see them, you know, in photos and lots of things. And when one arrives on your doorstep, you sort of think it's a bit surreal. Um, they really do exist. Anyway, this is the uh, Robin SB540D. And um, uh, this one came with a Turner microphone as well. And uh, one of the uh, plus threes. <laughs> Coincidentally, I've got the plus 3B sitting right next to it that uh, goes on that uh, tram behind there. We're a bit sort of <laughs> a bit of a mess here at the moment. It's all base stations. There's the uh, Stalker Double X, as Michael likes to call them. Uh, we've got a couple of the Navajo, um, uh, what are they, TRC 457s? Um, and, uh, but, oh, I've got to say, this, this really um, is an uh, interesting looking radio. Globe's a little bit sort of light on on that side. I noticed that in the photo actually when I was buying it and um, um, this side's looking fine. We'll probably just replace both to try and even them up nicely. Not a, you know, like all those years of technical stuff I suppose I should be able to manage a couple of globes, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but um, yeah, all working fine. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, getting all watts out and stuff like that happening. Uh, having a lot of drive there. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Just to give you a bit of an idea. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, test one, two. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, um, that's just into the analyzer at the moment. And speaking of the analyzer, I suppose we'll go to generate. Jeez, I cut my hand earlier too. Feel sorry for me? No, probably not. All right, uh, let's have a look here. Let's just bring it right down. Uh, we're at about point, <laughs> 0 0.01 of a microvolt, and it's still hearing it. Jeez, for a 1977 radio, that's got uh, that's got a little bit of. Uh, uh, that's amazing, actually. Uh, and that'll come up there to about uh, 0 0.04, 0 0.1 of a microvolt, 0.4 of a microvolt. Look at this, 1.5. Okay. So we can safely attune... Uh, well, you can just hear that there. And there we are. Is that amazing or what? For a 1977 receiver, um, I suppose we shouldn't be so surprised. All right, just turn that generate function off. Um, but yeah, look, pretty much um, a little bit like the um, uh, like the SPEs. Basically, put in the channel, bang, 16, 14, uh, 99. <laughs> just kidding. This one's limited to 40 channels, uh, unless. Unless, 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 there's a little trick. You pull out the clarifier and you go, before, uh, sorry, <laughs> it doesn't change in channels, but that then becomes um, 54. Uh, and a better example would have been, uh, da, one, let me get past that there. One, five, why does it want to do that? Try this, one, oh, okay. So then I'm there and then I pull the clarifier. Oh, God, I'm going well. I need a a 101 book on you know how to how to use this thing i don't think we'll have anything in scan at the moment uh in in memory sorry because it's been on a bit of a journey here um because their memories are one two three four and five there um so i'll need to put some memories into it um but um, i'm just not sure i'm gonna have to look up the manual on this but whether you hold in and then hit enter and then yeah now i'll have to Definitely have a little look at that and just see what um, happens to uh, put a memory in. Peter Newman, if you're listening, <laughs> send me a note. You always know these things. <laughs> Whenever I don't know something, I get on the Pete and say, Pete, what does this bloody thing do? Uh, that was the story with this one here. Pete sent me, oh, God, 50 meg of bloody stuff on um, the Tram D201. Unbelievable how much information. <laughs> when you ask for something from Pete, be ready. He's got everything. It's great. Um, and you know what? It's good having people like that to, to be able to help us younger folk. <laughs> I think Pete's around my age, actually. But anyway, it sounded good. Um, okay, so basically clock, so, you know, set clock, blah, 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 etc., etc. slow, fast, and etc. Um, now, I'm running off a 110-volt supply with one of our little step-down transformers over here. Um, so the question would be, is the clock going to be completely accurate, 60 hertz versus 50 hertz? The answer to that is... Probably not. Uh, I would think that it's probably going to be out just a little bit. But I know Michael down in uh, my um, 
<laughs> what is it with mates that seem to have everything who's got his new bullet Mustang? Yeah, I don't, don't feel sorry for him either. Um, but I know Michael did a conversion um, on a GE Superbase where he not only got it back to 240 volts, which is not so hard, but what is hard is getting the 50 hertz to work on the clock and, you know, to get the clock totally accurate. So, you know, that you've got to give him credit for. But um, that's really good. Um, don't ask me how I cut my hand. It's a long story. Um, it's only you know, flesh wound. <laughs> flesh wound, yeah. Okay, upper side band. Um, and uh, AM there. And I think on AM, yeah, we've got about, oh, let's have a look here. 4.5 watts. Hello, hello, hello. Yep, yep, that's all good. Um, so, um, you know, if we were down on um, uh, on the um, Super Bowl channel, uh, you know, and there was actually a beam connected and maybe an amplifier. Hey, I bought a really nice amplifier. It's coming. You'll see a review of that very soon. CB amplifier, three valves, four valves actually, uh, driver three outputs. Um, and uh, anyway, more on that later. We may actually put that amplifier with this radio. Um, we will have to sort out a little switching line, but uh, anyway. Okay, so this is... Um, one of the radios that, you know, I sort of, um, I suppose uh, the SBE Console 6, I've got a mint one of those with not a mark on it, and that was one I've always wanted, uh, and that took years to find that one. That one came from Ross Keo from Strictly Ham, who was very kind to me, way too kind, don't deserve that sort of kindness, but anyway, he was, um, he had a bit of a mental day, and um, uh, anyway, that's um, most, <laughs> those of you that know me know the story, um, and it's a good story. Okay, so uh, this would be the other one that you know I, I really do like. I, I just think in 1977, um, functions like memories and etc. A little bit like the SBE Console Six, you know, scan those types of things. Uh, they just didn't really exist um, uh, that much. Uh, secondly, I, I, this is the brushed aluminium front. Um, anyone that knows me well knows I love brushed aluminium fronts. I've probably got a few of them sitting down over here somewhere. Where did I put them? Oh, maybe over here. You know, as you'll notice, the Lafayette's a bit dark in here. And even the Cobras, you know, I've got another oh, copper upside down there. That one's not a good display of a copper, but love brushed aluminium fronts. But where was another? Oh, there's another, oh, geez, down here, Lafayette, down here. Um, anyway, these, um, these brushed aluminium fronts, uh, they are real winners as far as I'm concerned. They just look great. And some of you that saw the, you know, coming to Australia photos of the... Robin SB540D um, saw me do a comparison of the black versus the brushed aluminium. And don't get me wrong, you know, some people love this black look. And black with chrome, you know, like the, the touches with chrome here really work well. But, you know, it's brushed aluminium with aluminium looking knobs, really nice, really like it, really like it heaps. Um, they, they really, um, po possibly I would have done, I mean, the handles they've done to sort of complement um, the knobs and uh, switch here, etc. But I might have done those in brushed aluminium too, but they've got more of a chromey sort of look to them, to be fair. Anyway, let's not um, knock it too much. Um, 35, there we go, which is no good because my analyzer is sitting on 16. And, and that's really how fast you can run around this radio. It's pretty easy. Um, the um, uh, SWR meter, um, you've got to calibrate, which basically is uh, here, sorry, going half asleep. And of course it's a one-to-one -one SWR because we're on a dummy load. So there you go. Um, as mentioned before, um, there's there are uh, a couple of things about this. Uh, in, in life we always try to find as close to perfect as we can. Well, this is not perfect. Let me tell you why. Um, the bass microphone, as much as you may love Turner Plus 3s, and I do, uh, you know, the classic microphone to have with this radio is the handheld. And when you pulled the microphone, uh, sorry, the clarifier out, um, on the microphone, they had a clarifier that was actually on the mic itself. So um, this is the reason they use a, um, let's have a look, I'll show you. They use a, a little bit, uh, 246 pin plug on there. And um, so they, they bring clarifier controls through to, uh, to do that. God, that hand looks worse than what it really is. Um, it's really not that bad, you know, it's just... It's a flesh wound, as Monty Python says. Okay, um, so so what someone's elected to do, which if we can find the microphone, we will turn it backwards. 
as you can hear in the receive, hear that, hear that. Or better example, hear that with nothing there. So there's our tone on channel 16 and we've just gone up to channel 56. So is that a mod that I like? No. No, it's not. It's actually not. Um, I, I think that when you're dealing with a 1977 classic radio, probably a good idea not to do those sort of mods. Um, just really starts to, you know, detract from really what it... Um, look, if I had two of them, um, sure. Maybe have one that's perfectly standard, one that you go, you know, go for, uh, do whatever. Um, I saw Bill Anson doing something recently to a um, President Washington Mark III of... Uh, uh, so what am I saying? Uh, Super Bengal Mark III, sorry. Um, and glows around all these little bits, around the mic sockets, um, phono jack, etc. And I thought to myself, I love that. You know, I, I truly do. It really looked fantastic. And um, if, if you haven't seen that, go and have a look on CB Radio Times. Um, have a look for the... Um, I'm sure it was a Super Bengal Mark III, sorry. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but... Um, uh, but I, I was dazzled by the lights. But the, the blue lights that he did on them, it, it looks fantastic. And I can sort of imagine it on a few radios we've got here, and I think we'll talk to him about that. And that will be the rule, that, you know, let's keep one standard and then let's have one that's supercharged and do something to it and make it look a bit different. And, and some of you are seeing, you know, as we're doing over here with um, some of these radios, um, some of these kits we're putting on the front, et cetera, et cetera, um, you, you start to sort of, when you've got a few of them, you can start sort of being a little bit more, um, I suppose, generous with doing a few things to them, uh, as long as you've, you know, you've got that sample that says, yeah, there's the standard one. But anyway, all right, well, look, we'll get this thing on air. Oh, look, I'm, I'm unfortunately away for a bit. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll do a video to um, get it up on air. We've got a whole lot of new antennas going up with stacks of antennas, uh, four more towers going up with just... Um, uh, organised uh, and and we're refurbishing one tower at the moment. So at the moment, uh, the only tower we've got up that's working efficiently is our 85. Well, actually no, it's about 100 over 100 feet. But uh, it's uh, uh, where the 40 metre beam is is uh, 85 feet. We've got a 6 metre beam about 95 feet. Then we've got a Serio 27 meg. <laughs> you know the ones with the 16 um, little radials. Uh, that's up at about 100 and something feet. Uh, but that's the only tower up at the moment. We've got everything else down. So in the next uh, few weeks, expect a few updates and a few videos. Okay, 73s, and I'm hoping that um, you've enjoyed looking at a Robin SB540D as much as uh, I did. Uh, a big thank you. That Actually, you know what? Um, this should have been said at the start. A big thank you to Robert Carroll, who's Bob. Good old Bob over in uh, New York State. This would not be here, trust me, if it wasn't for uh, Bob giving me a uh, lot of help. Neither would the bits uh, for my supercharged Mustang, neither would my VFO for my Kenwood, neither would my... <laughs> trust me, Bob's been really, really helping me a lot. So thank you very much to our, uh, uh, our uh, good mates over in the USA. Um, really appreciate your help because sometimes it's just not easy to do from over here down under. And um, you guys probably don't think like you do, think you're doing a lot, but you are, because there are people that will not sell to us. They just couldn't be bothered to do the freight and etc. So um, you, uh, you guys are just fantastic. And uh, after spending so much time over there, and you know, obviously uh, getting to know uh, people in the US, you guys are like brothers anyway. Okay, 73s from VK3, Charlie Mike. Uh, sorry, this one was a bit of a longer video, but it is a sort of a very rare radio. Okay, 73s. Cheers.